Good morning, church family. Merry Christmas. We hope that you are still snuggled up in your PJs this morning um, with some tasty treats maybe, just embracing a slower pace this morning. We are so glad that you have chosen to tune in this morning and to worship with us online. Um, we just want to let you know that next week, January 2nd, we will be returning to in-person services right here at 10 o'clock and so you can register online if you're planning on coming out of course we will still be streaming for those of you who are embracing the slow pace for a little bit of extra time or for any of you who are just choosing to tune in online um, so make sure you register for next week if you'd like to come out and just a quick heads up our kids and youth programs are currently on hold for the holidays um, they will resume once school is back in, so make sure you check our calendar online to see those dates for when all of our regularly scheduled programming is um, coming back. It is good to take some time to worship this morning, to worship the light of the world, and I just wanted to read a couple verses for you from Scripture. Isaiah 9 verse 2 says, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And then Jesus said in John 8 verse 12, Jesus spoke and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Would you pray with me this morning as we begin our service? Almighty oh, God, our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace, our wonderful Counselor, thank you for being the light in this dark world. We thank you that we can put our hope in you. We thank you for the joy and the peace that you promised to us. We thank you that you chose to humble yourself and come down to this earth so that we would never have to walk the earth alone again. Here we are to worship you, Lord. Here we are to bow down and say that you are the one who is worthy of our praise. Would you accept our praise this morning, Lord? Amen.
Good morning, church family and friends. Happy Boxing Day, and I think Merry Christmas as well is in order. Carol and I hope you're having a wonderful holiday. You know, what a beautiful Christmas Eve service that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the most wonderful time of the year. I love Christmas Eve service and the candle lighting, the kids program, the kids being part of it. That just really makes mm -hmm. Christmas for me. And you can see we're doing things a little differently <laughs> here. We are doing a little differently. We are pre-recording this particular message. And, uh, well, we're not here in person today on Boxing Day. So I hope that uh, our worship team volunteers, our tech teams and staff are having a wonderful day with their families. Great holiday. And then Carol and I hope that our church family, I, that you're having a wonderful mm -hmm. time with your family and those who are dropping by to see you. And well, speaking of Carol, <laughs> I just want to say it's great to have you back in the pulpit and being able to do this message together mm -hmm. again. It's I always, always love that. I do too. I it's really great to have it. you. And I thank our church family and our denomination mm. for the encouragement they give for us to do something like this. So Amen. thank you so much. You know, we've been doing a lot of talking about Jesus the last couple weeks and about so many of his names. In fact, um, probably many of the songs we've been singing hmm. recently talk about Jesus, the names of Jesus. I heard one today about uh, Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And so do you know the meaning of your name? Uh, yes, always in trouble. No, that's your middle name. Oh, oh. Middle name. Uh, no, what, what um, does John mean? Johanna. Okay. That is a Hebrew the name. Hebrew name. Yeah. And it means grace by God. And you are. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Not humility, but <laughs> grace. <laughs> right. <laughs> so in many of the first world countries, the name of a company is vitally important. Mm. And the popular internet search engine google yeah 
It was originally named Back Rub. What? <laughs> I know. <laughs> back Rub. Who thought of that? Okay. And then, as they were getting ready to do investments, have investors come in to expand their company, they changed the name to Google. 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 Okay. Yes. What's that mean? It, I don't know. It's some uh, computer binary oh. system. It means one with, I don't know, 100 zeros behind it probably is, wow. is what they were saying. Okay. Um, and the founder, Sergey Brin. Yep. And yeah. Larry Page, Larry Page yeah. presented their project to the investors. Mm -hmm. And the first check they received back was written to Google. You mean they, mis they, they, they misspelled it? They misspelled it on the check. <laughs> and they loved it so much, they stuck with that. Google. Oh. Well, the rest is history on that, huh? Yep, it is. Well, there's a guy named George Eastman, and he loved the letter K. And he decided he wanted to have a company name that had uh, a K in the front and the back. And so we have today Kodak uh, mm -hmm. Film and Cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of interesting. Nintendo. Uh, right. All of our, our grandkids love Nintendo. Our kids grew up with Nintendo. So did it, we. Well, I did too, didn't I? And it's composed of three Japanese uh, kanji characters. Nintendo. Mm -hmm. You're going to love this, Carol. The... Uh, it's translated, it literally means, uh, heaven blesses hard work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you take a name like Nike, mm -hmm. it's thought to be worth, the brand, the, the name is worth mm -hmm. uh, somewhere around $7 billion. Oh, Coca-Cola wow. is like 10 times that. Wow, wow. So, in almost every other country in the world, a personal name has great meaning. Hmm. So many times a child's yeah. uh, name is not given to them until they see what that personality is going to be like in that child. And so then they'll a give it of a mine, name. A friend of mine would have been named Satan if, if they had oh, waited. Please. For, okay. All right. <laughs> Forget the dad jokes right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so the name would represent a very meaningful trait of the child. Okay. And when asking children in Botswana, what their name was and what mm -hmm. it meant. Every child I talked to yeah. was able to give the meaning of their name. Wow. So thinking today of the name of Emmanuel, mm. I definitely want to know the meaning of mm. this Hebrew name. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel, you ready? Yes. It means declaration of trust and confidence. Okay. Here's the statement. All right. The definition. With us is God exclamation point. We always say Emmanuel, God with us, but that is amazingly even more emphatic and declarative. Yes. With us wow. is God. Yeah. And so it literally means with us, with us yeah. is God. The personal aspect and then an exclamation point? Right. Wow. Like, don't forget this. Okay. Isaiah, who is a prophet of mm -hmm. the Old Testament, told of God in human flesh. And this is on Isaiah 7, 14. Mm -hmm. The Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means with, with us, us is, is God. God. Mm -hmm. wow. So... What's in the name of Emmanuel? It's not the name that we immediately hmm. associate with baby Jesus of Bethlehem. Hmm. And his name isn't Jesus, first name, Christ, right. last name. Some people think that. Right. right. That was it, it was a totally different thing in culture at that time, how they mm -hmm. named people. But Jesus is the Greek form of Joshua. And Joshua is an Old Testament leader who led the people through many trials and tribulations yeah. through the wilderness, a hero of the Israelis sure. in Exodus. Yeah. And Jesus, it's interesting, Joshua. This huh. is a very normal name, which is ordinary in the first century, just like yeah. Jane and John Smith is in the 21st century, North America. Very familiar name. Wow. Don't you think, Carol, there's um, maybe something even reassuring about 
this idea that the extraordinary Jesus um, comes to us as an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only did he have an ordinary name, but think about this for a second. We don't really have a description of him in the Gospels. So I mm -hmm. suppose that means that he had really an ordinary appearance. Mm -hmm. Going back to Isaiah for a second, Isaiah addresses that prophetically mm -hmm. in chapter 53. He says in verse 2, He didn't have an impressive form or majesty that we should look at him, no appearance that we should desire him. In other words, he, he was an everyday guy. Who didn't stand out as, right. as a person mm -hmm. but this common man had a most uncommon mission right, right. he he was uh, a mission to the cross and then ultimately the resurrection that that paid our sin debt conquered mm -hmm. sin conquered the sting of death mm -hmm. uh, Philippians chapter 2 addresses how beautiful his name and mighty his name has become and, and so Paul says, God elevated him to a place of highest honor, mm -hmm. gave him a name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord mm -hmm. to the glory of God the Father. Because it was through the cross and the resurrection that Jesus brought God to us, Emmanuel, so, where is Emmanuel? So, after his birth, and then his death on the cross, Jesus rose bodily from mm -hmm. the dead. Right. And then, bodily, was ascended into heaven. Okay. So, in 1 Peter 3.22, it says, it's describing Jesus, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, mm. with angels, mm authorities and powers having been subjected to him. Oh, I love that. Right. And Hebrews 12, 2 tells us, we must keep our mm. eyes on Jesus, who leads us and makes our faith complete. Would you read that part again? That, that's mm -hmm. a beautiful, it fits so well with what we're saying today. Right. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, who leads us and makes our faith complete. Mm. He endured the shame of being nailed to a cross because he knew later on that he would be seated at the right side of God's throne. Mm. Beautiful. And, in fact, I love this, because in James and John's, Mother. These are the sons of oh, Zebedee. Zebedee. Okay. Two of the disciples. Right. So this this verse is talking about Jesus being on the right side of yes. God. Yeah. Being seated on the right side of God. And so I love this mom. This is this is the typical helicopter mom. <laughs> she approaches Jesus and she says, Ah, oh, Jesus, uh, once you set up your kingdom, would you let one of my sons be on your right side and my other son can be on your left side? Are we talking that she went on behalf of the adult sons? Adult sons. <laughs> and I'm sure they were not amused. but <laughs> <laughs> They were dying right there in front of Jesus. Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. Um, so Jesus himself said he would go back to heaven and make things ready for his followers, yeah. that he would come back and get his Jesus followers. And he says, there are many rooms in mm. my father's house. Yeah. I wouldn't tell you this unless it was true. And I'm going there to prepare a place for each of you. And if I go mm. and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And that where I am, you may be also. And that's John chapter 14. I love that. Verses 2 and 3. I know. It's so beautiful. It gives us such a hope it does. for the future, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Um, and, and so as we think of this, we continue thinking about this. We might be tempted to say that Emmanuel today would maybe in the 21st century be more like God was with us. Mm -hmm. So the question... Maybe you're feeling alone down here on planet Earth, right? Some people are, especially this time of year. 
That's true. This right? is a and tough holidays, time of year for some people. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe you feel kind of left on your own until Jesus returns. And the good news is Jesus is with us mm -hmm. uh, in, in a way far better than he could do when he walked bodily on the earth. Mm -hmm. He truly is God with us, or as you've said, with us is God. Yes. Uh, every day. But now he lives in us. He, right. He's not limited by the human body limitations that he had when he was here on the earth. His spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, possesses us. Have you ever thought of it in terms like no. that? No. Possesses us. You think possess usually in a negative way. Right. But this, <laughs> but this is, is a beautiful... Uh, yeah. We're in the light his way. Yeah. We're in his mm -hmm. care. He lives in us. Mm -hmm. He he possesses. He owns us. Okay. I love that. Yeah. That's and beautiful. and and that he dwells in us right now. Ephesians 1 talks about this in verse 13 and 14. In him mm -hmm. uh, you also when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who's the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Now, Carol, uh, you were a real estate agent, a realtor for over 15 mm -hmm. years. What is significant about this verse? The word guarantee really sticks out at me as being in that part of the business world mm -hmm. all those years. Um, when I helped a family buy a house, they would put down earnest money. It's earnest. also, which would okay. be like a guarantee, like okay. I am serious about this, All I right. really want this house. I mean, I'm putting my all into it. Mm. Here's a promise, this is, this is part of it. This mm. is part of it. Okay. Um, and then of course the rest was given at the closing time. Okay. When the time came. Sure. Um, so the deposit, it showed the seller They were in earnest. They okay. really were serious about this. And so that reminds me of like in, in Ephesians, mm. it tells us that when we desire to know Jesus, mm -hmm. he personally gives us his guarantee. Oh, his guarantee. His yeah. deposit yeah. into our lives. His Beautiful. spirit is that deposit. Yeah. It's kind of his stamp yeah. of saying, hey, Here's a little bit. This is a little of what it's going to be like. Here's a, a taste of, of uh, my presence yes, until I you're with me. I promise you, yeah. it's going to be even better than this. Beautiful. And so he gives us a spirit to live in us and teach us, enables us to follow him and serve Jesus mm. by the spirit strength, not oh, ours. not our strength. Right. Sure, that makes yeah. sense. So he really is Emmanuel. He is still Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. He is with us is God, exclamation point. Right. And I think sometimes we can forget that Jesus is our Emmanuel. We use that word at Christmas. We use that name at Christmas. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really a 24-7 declaration of right. who he is and really where is. he is. Yeah. And some days our emotions really try to dictate how mm -hmm. we feel <laughs> that day. Uh, I, I think we all battle that at times. And sometimes we think or we make decisions as though we're on our own, mm -hmm. that we're by ourselves down here on earth, you know. We get bad news, uh, our health declines, or we have family struggles that just wear us down. Mm -hmm. They discourage us to the point where we don't feel he is with us. But... Jesus is with us, and he's always with us, and he loves us, and that he cares so much. Mm -hmm. So I think many of our church family this year, I think I'm thinking about all of last year because mm. we're getting ready to sure. enter into a new year, but so many could give stories of hard things they went through, um, the good days, mm. the bad days, the uh, days you're surviving and other days when you're thriving. Mm. But maybe we don't really understand right now that we believe that Jesus gave us his mm -hmm. guarantee, sure. his earnest, 
And we're not living like that. We're not li- living with, with us is God, mm. exclamation point. Yeah. And he is in the here and now. Mm-hmm. He is here with us. And we need to, on purpose, consciously, look for him. See what he's doing. See what he's doing in other people's lives. Mm-hmm. And listen to him. With us is God. Oh, I love that. So the question is, what's in a name? Emmanuel. And I love how you put that. Jesus is with us. He loves us. Mm -hmm. He's preparing heaven for us to be bodily with him. Mm -hmm. And that we we are even um, anxiously waiting his second coming. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think as we conclude today, we think of... It's a powerful statement, what you just said, that God uh, is with us. With us is God right now Mm -hmm. in the here and now. He is in the here and now. Yeah. He may have been there yesterday as well, and we know he'll be there in the future, but we know Right right now. Right now, this day. That's important, isn't it? It is. It helps us to focus. It helps us, like some of the scripture we were reading, keep our eyes on him Um, keep our eyes on jesus Mm -hmm. as we go into a new year 2022 new challenges right um maybe some old challenges (laughs) in a fresh way but um maybe there's some fear oh what's it hold what's going to happen and i i think just the opposite there's anticipation right that since he's emmanuel since he's with us is god exclamation point Mm -hmm. and he's with us in the here and now there's nothing too great for him. Right. There's nothing that's going to take him by mm-hmm. surprise. Right. And as we finish up today, I, I hope that you can just kind of grab hold of this idea. With us is God. And Jesus is in the here and now. Hmm. Be there with him. Yes. Be there with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's be the hands and feet of Jesus in 2020. Uh, 22, uh, with our own family, with our neighbors, with uh, our community around us, as a church family, you know, until every home is led by Jesus, we want to be his hands and feet and his heart to those all around us. We hope you have a great rest of the uh, holiday today and this week, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, and we're looking forward to what God's going to do in 2022 Thanks for being with us today. And if we can help you in any way, reach out to the email that you see. And we would love to. Maybe you'd like to know more about how to know Christ as your Savior, how to really have him in your life every day. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're just struggling in life and you'd love for somebody to pray with you and just to help uh, help you walk through these times. It would be our privilege to help Mm -hmm. in any way we can. And so have a great day today. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you uh, are with us. You are with us with an exclamation point. And we thank you for that and we praise you. And that, Lord, we want to be in the here and now, right now, because that's where you are. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, I pray we'll keep our eyes on you in 2022 and that we would represent you well as your hands and your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Happy New Year.
now is not part of the program. This goes in the bloopers. I'm really <laughs> oh, the low battery light just came on. Turn it on. <laughs> How do I look with a flower with my head on a flower? There you go. Wow. Great meaning. So Many times, <laughs> pause. Okay. Many times, a child. No, no, no. like pause. We're we're gonna we're gonna back up. She'll catch that. Okay, so let me start back at yeah. my. Sorry. Okay. I was busy drinking something. So start in so in almost every other country. Okay. All right. <laughs> so in almost every other country in the world. You know, the context of that passage is the, the dry religion of the day, these religious leaders who Jesus called whited sepulchre, sepu, sepulchre, what is it? Sepulchre. <laughs> I did it too. <laughs> <laughs> We're not editing that. Uh, sepulchres and, and that um, inside full of dry men's bones on the outside, oh, beautiful right. and so forth.